Godzilla 2 starts right where the first film ended. Manhattan lies in ruins and scientists are dissecting Godzilla's body. Tortured by guilt, Nick sneaks into the Manhattan underground, hoping to find a remnant of Godzilla's species. He discovers a dying baby Godzilla trapped under the rubble. After freeing it, he buys a lot of fish to feed it, and then they develop a bond, and the baby Godzilla starts to see Nick as its mother. It imprints on him. When soldiers approach, Nick realizes that they'll kill the baby Godzilla on sight. So he lures it away with fish and they escape to the waterfront. A homeless man mistakes the baby Godzilla for a pet and is scared away when it snaps at him. Nick tries to convince the baby Zilla to swim off on its own, resorting to tough love when it refuses. He swears at it, he throws rocks at it, and heartbroken, the baby Zilla finally swims away, leaving Nick with mixed emotions. Two years later, strange and eerie occurrences start happening worldwide. A cruise ship found deserted off Australia, a vanished village in Fiji, and a jumbo jet mysteriously sliced in half midair over Indonesia with no sign of passengers anywhere. In a small New England town, a giant egg is discovered, sparking concerns of Godzilla's return. General Hicks, suspecting Godzilla's involvement, seeks out Nick. When he and Felipe head to the Australian outback, they encounter Anna Charlton, a tough biologist who's studying dingoes. She initially rebuffs their inquiries. Suspicious of Anna, Felipe secretly tracks her movements. As they trail Anna deeper into the outback, their vehicle breaks down, leaving them stranded. Suddenly, they hear Godzilla's unmistakable roar and witness its full-grown form alongside a group of teen Zillas, its offspring. When the teen Zillas come under attack from dingoes, Nick and Felipe find themselves in danger of being trampled by a stampede. Anna rescues them in her jeep, and they navigate skillfully through the chaos. During their escape, Anna admits to witnessing unusual events, confirming Nick and Felipe's suspicions. Now, in a place of relative safety, Nick and Felipe clash over Godzilla's nature and their responsibilities, as Anna reveals her deep involvement with the creature. Nick's past secret of rescuing the baby Godzilla comes to light, leading to a confrontation where Nick drives straight towards Godzilla to prove its gentleness. And it doesn't attack, which leads to them studying Godzilla and its offspring. They discover clues pointing to a different threat. There's a mutated group of insectoids on Monster Island. Realizing Godzilla's role is actually maintaining balance, they attempt to lead Godzilla back to Monster Island, but face a devastating attack from the Global Task Force, which results in the deaths of all but one Godzilla offspring. Despite their efforts, Godzilla and its last surviving offspring, dubbed the Runt, burrow underground for safety. Meanwhile, in Sydney, Australia, a massive greenhouse enclosure houses the mysterious larval egg surrounded by military protection. Nick realizes the egg's significance as the first step in unleashing deadly insectoids worldwide. As General Hicks hesitates to destroy the egg, the queen bitch attacks, prompting Godzilla's dramatic entrance. In a fierce battle, Godzilla fights the queen and manages to destroy her egg. A rescue mission then happens, where a bunch of airborne insectoids attack this airplane and then it crash lands. And amidst the chaos, Nick and Felipe locate and liberate captive humans who were actually taken hostage by the insectoids. These were the natural disasters at the start of the film, like the jumbo jet being sliced in half. The humans weren't actually killed, but were rather taken so they could be used as food to feed the offspring of the queen bitch. They confront the queen again, and Godzilla yet again intervenes, culminating in a decisive victory for the giant reptile. General Hicks, who was once poised to destroy Godzilla, recognizes the creature's inherent value as the people rally around it. A reunion occurs as Godzilla is joined by the runt, and the two Godzillas head off into the ocean as the humans bid farewell to the monsters. Cut to credits. What's the backstory here? Well, Sony aimed to create a Godzilla trilogy after acquiring the franchise rights in 1992. Of course, they would bring on Roland Emmerich to direct the 1998 film, and despite its profitability, it did gross over three times its budget, the film still fell short of expectations and faced heavy criticism. Tristar still pursued the trilogy idea and started pre-production on a sequel, but it was abandoned in 1999. While this is still a first draft, I think this could have been a fantastic movie. Based on the plot synopsis, this feels more like a Godzilla movie than the 1998 film did. 
It reminds me of the Showa era flicks. For example, the insect egg washing up on shore is ripped right out of 1964's Mothra vs. Godzilla. I also really like the idea of the horde of Godzilla offspring fighting dingoes. The most interesting part of this movie, though, is the film's antagonist, the Queen Bitch. The name is kind of cringe and doesn't really feel Godzilla-esque, but it's at least more memorable than some of the original MonsterVerse Titans that have generic names like Behemoth and Leviathan. While we don't have any art of what she might have looked like, I'm just imagining this mix of like a Cazador from Fallout New Vegas and the unused lightning bug monster from the video game Godzilla Unleashed. This film also retroactively helps the 1998 Godzilla movie in a few ways. For starters, it totally makes sense now as to why the military caused more damage than Godzilla did. After all, that was one of the biggest complaints people had. Why wasn't Godzilla destroying more buildings? Well, it's because the species is actually peaceful. It only attacks when provoked. Overall, I think this could have been a really neat follow-up to the original film that would have improved it tenfold, much like how the animated series eventually did. You may have noticed, actually, that a few of the plot elements here would be reused for the animated series. I'll make a big video about that cartoon someday, but for now, let's just stay focused and talk about what happened after the cancellation of Godzilla 2. Well, Tristar opted to theatrically release Toho's Godzilla 2000 in the US after scrapping plans for a sequel to Emmerich's remake. Tristar very briefly considered making a lower budget American sequel to Godzilla 2000. It would have been called Godzilla Reborn. The film would have used Suitmation on a very small budget. The plot included a female TV reporter and a male hotel owner with Bruce Campbell in talks to Star, which would have just been awesome because Bruce Campbell is great in everything he's in. This is my boomstick! I think Godzilla Reborn could have been either really good or really bad. I know, brave statements only on this channel. As much as I love seeing actors in practical suits destroying miniature cities, America just doesn't really do suitmation like Japan does. Off the top of my head, I can really only think of the Dino De Laurentiis King Kong movie from 1976 and its sequel, King Kong Lives. I just can't imagine American studio heads taking the project seriously. And that was true when the head of production at Columbia Pictures basically stalled the project, which was one of the many reasons as to why it never even got made in the first place. Toho would end up producing Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah Giant Monsters All Out Attack instead, and Sony contemplated making a brand new reboot of the Godzilla franchise that would have been completely unrelated to the 1998 film, but they ended up just letting the rights expire in 2003. On one hand, I'm really sad that Godzilla Reborn was never made just because of how much potential it had, but I'm also somewhat grateful because it means that we got GMK instead, which is hands down the best film of the millennium era. Is either Godzilla 2 or Godzilla Reborn a project that you wish would have seen the light of day, or are you glad that it was scrapped? Let me know down below in the comments. Every week I'll be putting out a community post, it's going to be a poll, and I'll have four video ideas and it's up to you guys to decide what you want to see. This one just so happened to be the overwhelmingly popular pick, but next week we're gonna see entirely different video ideas, so stay tuned for that. And with all that out of the way, I'm Cole McCormick, you're watching Firewood Media, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.